get them from glory. I've studied and prayed throughout the week and got about 14 pages of stuff wrote down back here, but we'll just leave it back there out of the way. I've scribbled out a few things on a piece of paper. We'll use them for the wants us to. John chapter number 11, and for time's sake, we'll, we'll fill in more of the story in just a minute. John chapter number 11 and verse number 21. Gospel according to John 11, 21. The Bible said, Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou did. As I sit here and pray and kindly thought this afternoon, I began to think about this story. We all know the story of Lazarus. The Bible and Mary and Martha sent for him. They said, Lord, the one you love. It wasn't that the Lord didn't love Lazarus that he died. He said, Lord, the one you love. Lord, we're not even questioning that you love Lazarus. We know he's sick. We know he's suffering. Lord, we know he's hurt, and we know you love him. And because we know that you love him, and we're trusting that you love him, Lord, we're expecting that you're going to come and do something about it. Lord, because he's hurt, we're hurt. Because he's suffering, we're suffering. Because the shape that he's in, Lord, we're in the shape that we're in. And Lord, we're asking you, Lord, just to come and to do something, Lord. Not because you owe it to us, not because we deserve anything, but simply because you love Lazarus. We're asking you to come and to heal him and to help him. Here he was bad sick, and his family's praying and asking Jesus. They had faith to believe. They had faith to ask. I mean, it took something to send for Jesus. It took something to say, hey, Lord, would you come? It took something to believe that. But yet Jesus didn't heal him as they had hoped. Jesus didn't come running like they had asked. Lazarus died. They had the funeral, they buried Lazarus, they put the stone in front of there after they'd wrapped him in the clothes, they're all back at the house mourning. And no doubt they wondered, where's Jesus? Lord, we trusted you. Lord, we prayed, Lord, you said you loved us. We brought you into our home. Mary could have said, I broke that box of alabaster. I put, I worshiped you. I rubbed my hair on your dirty feet. And I bowed before you. And I did all these things for you. God, look what I've done. Martha says, hey, you come into our house and we fed you. And we done all these things, Lord. You said you loved us. But now our brother's dead. Lord, we believe. We prayed, we served, we worshiped. But you never did even come. You never did even answer. Lord, our brother's dead. And you never even came by. Preacher, what are you saying? Many of us have had family and friends and loved ones that loved the Lord and the Lord loved them. They trusted the Lord. They've been saved. They've suffered. They've struggled, some of them long periods, some of them short periods. And, and we begin to look at ourselves when we have issues. We begin to look at our family members. And we begin to look like Job's buddies did sometimes. And, well, what in the world's this guy done so bad? What did they do to deserve this? How come they're going through that? Where's God and why are you doing something? We begin to question. We begin to wonder, Lord, how? Lord, why? It's all natural. It happens. And I'm glad the Lord put these verses in the Bible to show the reaction of the people. But right in the midst of their grieving, right in the midst of their burden, right in the midst of their trouble, right in the midst of all that, Jesus shows up to comfort and help. Aren't you glad for that? It's bad enough that his brothers die. But here they're sitting in the house broken and burdened. And here comes Jesus. You know what he's showing him? He said, hey, even though your brother's dead, I still love you. Even though, even though you've struggled, you've suffered, I know it's been rough on you, and I know it's been hard on you, I still love you. And he comes, and he comes right to where they are. He comes right to the house, and, and he's there, and he's talking with Martha in this text as we pick it up. And, and in verse 21, Martha's going to speak, and she said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother wouldn't have died. We see in reality, I believe Martha's heard. Martha is more.
morning. Martha is broke and Martha is burdened. And here she's feeling in reality that Jesus has forsaken her. Lord, we prayed. Lord, we sent for you. Lord, we asked you to come. Lord, we had hoped we believed you would be here. Lord, where were you? Lord, if you'd have just been here. Lord, we know if you'd have been right there, just as you did with that young man that was sick, you would have raised him. Lord, just as you did with Jairus' daughter. Lord, just as you did with all the others. Lord, you could have had a resurrection right there. Lord, you could have done whatever. You're the great physician. You've got all power and glory and authority. Lord, you could have done anything you wanted. But Lord, you didn't even come. Lord, you wouldn't have had to touch him. You wouldn't have had to say anything. If you would have just been here. If you'd just been here, everything would have been okay. But, but, but watch this. You say, preacher, why was it that Lazarus died? We know he loved God. We know the Lord loved him. We know that Mary and Martha had served and worshipped as we talked about. Look back in verse number four with me right quick. In chapter 11, verse number four. Here they've sent for Jesus, and they said, Lord, the one that thou, whom thou lovest is sick. Verse number four, when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death. So in other words, it's not to hurt Lazarus. It's not to judge Lazarus. It's not because Lazarus is sin. It's not anything Lazarus has done, but what? But for the glory of God. But the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Brother Danny, why does he heal some? And some suffering die. Because God can sometimes get more, more glory out of our day than He can out of our life. I believe that is what this text is trying to teach us and to show us. You go over there to the grave. You go over there to where he was. And when people realized who Jesus was after the glorification, after these things come about, the Bible said, and many believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying as much as my grandmother suffered with cancer, as bad as the treatments were, as bad as the pain was, if it had not have been for her dying, I'd have never been at my funeral home in Fountain City that night in August. I'd have never heard the word of God preached. The man of the God, God man of God could have never glorified the God of man before me. And I'd have probably died lost in my singing. Though many had prayed, God, would you heal? God, would you do this? God, would you do that? And many thought the same God she served had failed her and forsaken her and her family in their time of need. If it hadn't have been for those things, it wasn't for punishment. It wasn't that he didn't love you. I believe at some point in his life, like many of us have prayed, God, I want you to take my life and get glory out of it. We read about Samson over there, the strongest man that ever lived. He did more for God in his day than he ever did throughout his whole life. Sometimes to live to die, but Christ did to, but to, die, to die is gain. My tongue got stuck in the roof of my mouth there. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. But as I begin to think about this thing, in verse number 22, watch this. Here she spoke out. She said, Lord, you wasn't here. Lord, you've done all these things. Lord, this, that, and the other. Verse number 22, she said, but I know that even now whatsoever that, that thou will ask of God, God will give it to thee. She said, Lord, I, I'm glad you're here. And they said, no, I wish you'd come sooner. Lord, I'm glad you come and you're going to show care to me and, Mar and Mary and you're going to comfort us and help us. I wish you'd have been here earlier with Lazarus. Lord, I still believe in you. Lord, I'm hurt right now. I'm discouraged right now. There's a lot of people that still believe in God. There's a lot of people that still saved by the good grace of God. But situations and circumstances of life has broke them and discouraged them. They say, I still believe God, but I don't have the faith I had when I was praying for you to heal my brother. But I'm, aren't you glad? It's okay to get mad at God. It's okay to just let God have it. He said, casting all your care. Anything that bothers you, anything that burdens you, casting all your care upon Him for He cares for you. Hey, there's sometimes I've just been mad and I've told God I was mad. It's all right. God's a big man. He can take that. But be careful when you get done talking. He's going to start. He's going to start. I don't know how many people I've blowed up on in the past. I try not to do that anymore. I don't know how many people I've blowed up in the past and said, all right, you're done. Now it's my turn. Watch this, verse number 23. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall live again. So a lot of times we think that's a bad thing. We think that's a bad thing. 
We used to have, and I'm not being mean or hateful. I've offended people with this statement. I'm not trying to be offensive, I promise you. There's a little stepping stone thing out in the flower bed at my house that somebody bought me when my mama died. And it says, if, if, tears, could, if tears could build a bridge and memory a lane, I'd walk back up to heaven and bring you back again. And that sounds cute and wonderful to the flesh. And I'm not being mean and hateful or anything else. But if I could walk up to heaven, honey, I wouldn't come back to begin with. It. And they sure wouldn't leave where they are to come to where I am. You understand that tonight? And to be absent from this body we'll talk about here in a minute to be present with the Lord to be in a glorified state in a glorified body not sick anymore not suffering anymore and they're not going to come back to this life for this sickness for nobody but Martha would have been content having her brother lay there and suffer the rest of her life just so she didn't have to see him die and get help from God and I'm afraid many times in our lives I'm not being mean or hateful and I don't have any of this for the I'm afraid many times in our life that, that we get selfish with things and with situations. And that we're worried about this and we're wondering about that. And we try our best to keep that person here no matter what they're facing or going through. Just to please ourselves when we ought to be glorifying God. But she makes that statement. He speaks up and he says, reminds of, hey, the, at verse number 23. Jesus says, Thy brother shall, shall live again. You know what he's saying? He's saying the grave's not final. The grave's not, not final. Aren't you glad when you walk out into that cemetery, though your heart's broken, though you're burdened down for the one inside that box that's fixing to be put, put down six foot deep and have a lid put on and covered in dirt and, and all those things are going to be down there in the ground, out there in the dark, cold ground. Aren't you glad that's not final? That's what Jesus is saying. Your brother's going to live again. He's going to live again. He was trying to tell her there was hope more than she could understand. See, we try to figure out the situation and the circumstance. And we forget all about how the Savior still loves us even though we hurt. Verse number 24. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. The Lord, I know one day, you know, the dead's going to rise and all those things is going to happen. And that's all good and well. And, and said, yeah, you know, I don't know one day he's going to live. Can, can I tell you something? Our dead loved ones, those that have died and went to sleep, they've not died, as we'll see here in a minute. They're, they're not out there in the ground. I understand people go and put flowers on graves out of honor and respect. I don't have a problem with that. They go to the grave and they sit there and talk. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not being mean or hateful. Please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. But they are not in the ground. Her hope was in a box. You know what we've done in our day and hour? We've put God in a box. Well, I'm just going to have you right here. When I need you, I'll come and get you out and this, that, and other. But it wasn't in the grave. That's what she's trying to explain. That's what Jesus is trying to explain. He's not here. Those men, when they buried Jesus down there in that tomb, and the women went looking for him, they said, He's not here. Why? He is risen. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. When they put that mirror up to Brother Lazarus' nose, Brother Danny, and there wasn't any fog on it, when he exhaled over here for the last time, he inhaled over in glory in a new body, and there was a shell of a man that was left laying right there, the body, the carcass, the face, the things that we've grown to love throughout this life. It was still laying there, but he was not there. And that's what he's trying to explain to Martha. That's what he's trying to explain. She, she, she didn't get it. She didn't get it. Preacher, why do you say she didn't get it? Watch verse number 25. Jesus said unto her, Jesus is going to answer. He could have said, yeah, you know, one day after a while, he's going to get up and everything's going to be all right. But that's not what he's saying. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and he the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he actually lived. Do you see that? He said, I'm the resurrection. I'm the one that gets up. I'm the one that gets you up. I'm the one that makes you live. He was alive because of who I am. He's getting up because of who I am. It's not because of life Lazarus lived as good as he was, as much as you loved him. It's because of who I am. We forget about who God is. So many people in that hour living in is burdened down and beat up and scared and afraid and hurt and all those things. You know what they've done? They've got mad at hell. They've got mad at God. 
That's what he's trying to say. Even though your brother still died, I'm still good. I'm still God. I'm still the resurrection. I'm still alive. And, and wait a minute. He were dead. That's past tense. Because he's alive now. He's trying to prove something and show something to her. He's trying to get her to understand. Sometimes we just don't get it. Preach what you mean. Verse number 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou thee. She just said my brother's dead. My brother's died. But I want you to go back to the front of the chapter there and notice what he told his disciples. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. He's just asleep. He's resting like he's never rested before. He's got peace like a river. Why? Because he'll never die. Who's never going to die? The believer, Brother Daddy, will never die. Brother Johnny went to sleep a little while ago in his life. He closed his eyes, but he didn't stay there. The body's there, the carcass is there, they'll come pick it up and they'll take it to the mortuary and, and they'll do whatever it is they do and they'll have a funeral and they'll have all that stuff and it'll be put in the ground or wherever and all those things have come to pass and it'll be all over with as far as this world's concerned. But it's not the end, amen, it's just the beginning. Because we'll never, ever die. Aren't you glad that you and I, even though we get burdened, beat down, and broken, and we've still got a blessed hope? Brother Danny, I might go to sleep before this day's over. They might have my name in the obituaries but tomorrow. I might be over at the cemetery. I might be here or there, and it doesn't matter, but I'll never, ever, ever die. Isn't that good to know? Isn't that good to know? We'll never die. We go to a place where there is no tomorrows. We go to a place where there is no night, where there's no sickness, no sorrow, no suffering, no funeral homes, no hospitals, no chemo treatments, no, no none of those things. Why? Because we're never, ever, ever going to die. See, the wages of sin is dead. But if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our sin debt was paid, so we don't have any wages to pay anymore. It's been paid, so death will never come. Okay. One day after a little while, we'll lay down and we'll go to sleep. That's if the Lord tarries his coming, amen. If Lord Jesus might come back before this service is over tonight, the roof might come off of this building. The clouds might roll back as a scroll and the Lord Jesus step out right now and say, come up hither. Preacher, what do you think about that? I say it's John Denham Alabama's. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. But I just want to remind us tonight as we're heavy hearted, as we're burdened for our loved one, for our friend. So I bow down and pray tonight. I thank the Lord for Brother Tommy, for the friendship and fellowship, for his faithfulness. For his faithfulness. He's been sick for a long time, but he's still he's come every time he could come, probably when he should come. Falling down, blacking out, everything else. He, he served his church he served his Lord. Thank you. I'm thankful for that. I want to have a testimony like that. I talked to him, as I told you earlier, that Saturday before I went to the hospital. My cell phone Sunday was over at Turkey Creek. Went up there and I seen him and talked to him. And I sit there and I told him, I said, you're my friend. I appreciate you. We prayed together. We cried together. Then he laughed. I said, I'm going to see Jesus before you. Oh, boy, how wonderful. I was scared to die. Why? Because he knew he wasn't dying. He made you know he was going home. It's going to be a wonderful homecoming day one day after a while. Heaven gets more and more sweeter as time goes on. Could you imagine? We see as we look in these verses, and I'm trying to close tonight, as we look in these verses, we see the sadness and the sorrow and the suffering. We see the sickness. We see the mourning of the loved ones. We see all those things. But Jesus talked about resurrection and life. Imagine one brother John, he's standing right there. His daddy's already over, and he's talking about, boy, how he missed his daddy. Talking about family and friends and loved ones. I know he loved Brother Richard, dear. Standing up here together, Brother John. They're all right there together. Fellowshipping and worshiping together. He said, boy, they've been gone some time. Brother Richard's been gone over a year. 
They said, well, that's a long time someday. Today with the Lord's thousand years, thousand yeah. years, one day, brother, it ain't been about five minutes in God's yeah. time. It ain't even been that. So they don't realize they've been gone as long as they have. But I'm glad we can read the Word of God. We can find out there's a great cloud of witnesses tonight standing around. They're rejoicing. They're rooting for you and I to go forward in the gospel and to do God's work. There was another one entered up there today. Believe it never die. They just go home. It's you and I to get to the side when our loved ones leave, whether it's I'll see you at home or whether it's goodbye. Mm -hmm. I hope we make the right decision in choice, but I, I just try to obey the Lord tonight and be obedient. I just want you to know that the believers never die. We just get to go home. Amen. Whatever your need is tonight, I ask you if you just bring it before God. Maybe you want to rejoice in, in being saved and born again by the good grace of God. Maybe you want to pray for your family, for your loved ones. Maybe you want to ask God to use your life. Lord, if you want to take my life to give glory to yourself, that'd be just fine with me. Lord, I want to be what you want me to be and do what it is you want for your honor for your glory. Maybe you're here tonight and you're burdened and broken by situations and circumstances. You can call on him because he loves you. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know him. If you died, you wouldn't go home, amen. You'd die. But whatever your need is tonight, I ask you to bring it to God.